Today is a special day, a special day on the beach. And we're counting down the top 75 top speedway riders of the 1970s. And we're gonna head towards number one. So let's go. I just wanna thank each and every one of you for hanging out with us and checking out the channel. We're counting down to the top one. And thank you so much for liking the video and subscribing. We appreciate you. Let's get down to business now. Coming in at number 8A, he was a Northern California rider. And he was a good rider too. He came on the speedway scene out of nowhere and he was fast. That guy just came on full bore and he stayed racing for like 45 years. He just retired a couple years ago. But in the 1970s, he was incredible fast. And who is that? It's flying Mike Faria. Mike was just a fast guy. He only knew one speed. And what was that speed? It was WFO wide F and open. Mike was one of those generational riders. They didn't come along very often, but Mike Faria was just an incredible rider. Later on in Mike's racing career, he went on to Europe. He raced in England. He was a British League rider. And also, Mike was a multi-time United States Speedway champion. Coming in at number seven was one of the most naturally gifted speedway riders of the 1970s. He was good. He was exciting. He was very exhilarating on a speedway bike. He kept you on the edge of your seat. And who was he? He was number 22, the wild guy, Danny Berserko Becker. The crowd at Costa Mesa went nuts when the announcer Larry Huffman announced his name. He would ride with reckless abandon. He would ride that crash wall and a cross up. When Danny Becker rode, he was just one of those guys that everybody was watching. Why? Because he was a crazy good rider. As a little child, Danny Berzergo Becker, he worked for Ron Stewart, the mini bike guy, and he would haul the motors around to different shops for Ron. They do valve jobs and stuff. And he would put the motors on the back of a bicycle and Danny Becker would ride those motors and they would have them fixed and repaired. And Danny Becker, he hung around Ron Stewart's shop until he became of age. At the age of 16 or so, Danny hopped on one of Ron's speedway bikes. And I'm sure Ron Stewart was shocked to see Danny. Danny was his boy. He <laughs> raised him since a little kid. And Danny Berserko Becker, he was on fire on that speedway bike. He was super fast, super wild. And Danny Berserko Becker got his nickname, being a wild man. Danny was pretty much one of those talents that was unearthly. You don't see a rider like Danny Becker, even to this day. He was just an incredible rider. He was one of the best riders of his era. If Danny had stayed clean, there's no telling exactly what would happen to Danny as far as how far he would go. He would have probably won United States Speedway Championships. And I heard he wanted to go to Europe. If he went to Europe, <laughs> he probably would have ended up a world champion. than just a speedway rider, Danny was an incredible human being. He was a nice guy. I heard that sometimes when he would see like a dog wounded on the side of the road, Danny would stop and help the dog. Also, Danny just had a lot of love in his heart. He was just a good guy. Humble guy. And he had a great love for his wife and his daughter.
Danny Becker just loved everybody. I remember I bought my first Speedway bike from Danny Becker and he was just the nicest guy. He would always say hi to me. Danny Becker was just a great human being. Sad to say, a few years ago, Danny had passed away and we're so sorry for the loss of Danny Berserko Becker. Rest in peace, Danny Becker. We continue the countdown to number six. And this guy, he was a dangerous rider when he was young. He would make a lot of trouble, right? But as he got older, he was really gifted and he was turned into one of the greatest speedway riders of the 1970s. He placed second in the 75 national championship. And who was that? He's had a three digit number. He was number 121. Dangerous dub, Errol. Dub start riding in the early 70s as a D2 rider and quickly and very quickly moved up to division one and he just became a good rider, and he just was solid, you know, like, he was a hard charger. Dub and I had the same sponsor at the same time. Of course, Dub was the, the old rider, the very gifted rider, and I was the young lion. And our sponsor was Jerry Fairchild. It's one of the most incredible minds in the speedway world at the time, he was good. Jerry Fairchild, he could just take an engine and make it fly. That's why Dub Farrow was so fast. I would sometimes ask Jerry, like, Dub is really a good rider, and how did you pick Dub? And Jerry Fairchild said, I like Dub because he was a hard charger. Like I mentioned, Dub's crowning moment was in the 75 United States Speedway Nationals at the Los Angeles Coliseum. I think Mike Bass won that one. He won a lot of them. However, Dub Farrell, he rode this four valve Fairchild Jawa engine. It was half Fairchild, it was fuel injected. And I think Dub had a hard time riding that bike. Why? Because it was so crazy fast. Sometimes Dub would say, could I just go back to my regular Jawa? Sometimes when I think of Dub, I can't help but to think of the Fairchild Industries and Jerry Fairchild, what he meant to me. He was just a mastermind. I was so lucky, I was so blessed to hook up with him. He saw me on the JP and he said, I want those JPs to beat the Jawas. And we did a pretty good job for a while. But however, rest in peace, my good friend, Jerry Fairchild. Getting back to Dub, he started off as a dangerous rider. And then with countless hours of seat time, Dub became a master on the speedway bike. Right after he placed second in that Speedway Nationals, he was my teacher at the Maley Speedway track. And I thought I knew a little bit. And then when I got with Dub Farrell, I realized that I knew nothing. And Dub just knew so much about Speedway. He taught me so much. I absorbed everything like a sponge. Why? Because Dub Farrell, he was really good. <laughs> Moving down the countdown to number five. Number five, top writer of the 1970s. He's still writing today. This guy is just incredible. And he's a captain for sure of America. Who is that? It's number 11. He took Mike Bass number two. That's Bobby Boogaloo Schwartz. When I was a young guy, I used to watch Bobby Schwartz in the stands at Costa Mesa Speedway. I saw this guy, he was next to me with black hair, kind of a big dude. He was cheering for Bobby, go Bobby, go! And I'm like, uh, hi, do you know Bobby Schwartz? And he goes, yeah, I know him. I said, how do you know Bobby? Did you get his autograph? And he said, no, I'm his brother. I said, your brother? He doesn't look like Bobby Schwartz. And he said, no, I'm a Hollywood makeup artist. And I talked to Bobby Schwartz just the last nationals. To, and I asked Bobby, do you have a brother that was a makeup artist? And he said, yes. And he said, is he still alive? And he said, no, he had passed away. 
So I was hanging out with Bobby Schwartz's, I guess, older brother. Also, when Bobby Schwartz was a young rider, he wore these black and yellow uniform. He had the Antelope sponsorship. And he was the Bumblebee. They called Bobby Schwartz the Bumblebee when he first started riding. I like that name. When Bobby was young, his papa, his name was like Cadillac Jack. He bought him a Speedway bike and Bobby hooked up a slide and Sonny Nutter. He'd go to his garage and he would ask Sonny like, hey, how do you ride this bike? And how do you fix this bike? And Sonny Nutter took Bobby Schwartz under his wings when he was probably like a 16, 17 year old rider, a young guy, a young gun. And Sonny Nutter taught Bobby Schwartz how to fix bikes and obviously how to race Speedway. Most Speedway riders have to learn step by step how to ride. It takes seat time, it takes practice to be a good Speedway rider. However, Bobby, when he got on a Speedway bike, he just ripped it up. Bobby was winning main events in 1975. He'd go out there and he was just smoking them. Bobby Schwartz was a natural. He was one of the most gifted young riders I think I've ever seen. Bobby will forever be remembered as a pole rider. Once Bobby got the lead and he was on the pole, it was almost impossible to pass Bobby Schwartz on the pole. He was just smooth as glass and he was just a very good pole rider. Hard to beat Bobby Schwartz on the pole. Bobby reached his first United States Speedway Nationals, 1975. And he didn't do that well. He placed like very middle of the pack. However, Bobby went on to win multiple United States Speedway National Championships. And he was in the World Championship. He won best pairs in the world. He was team captain. That's why they call him Captain America. Bobby will soon be pushing 70 years old and he's still racing Division One after nearly 50 years, probably like 50 years in a couple years, 50 years of a D1 rider. I think that would consider Bobby Schwartz as a true Ironman of Speedway. One of the things I like about Bobby, he has a good sense of humor. You know, Bobby, he has a lot of jokes. He's like a prankster. Bobby Schwartz is just, he has an incredible mind and he's a funny guy. I was in Germany. Okay, how are you Bobby? Bobby, um, what did he used to say to me? He used to call me some weird name. Sable's foot feet. Hi, Bobby. Hi. Good to see you, brother. Next time you see Bobby Schwartz in the pits at the races, give him lots of respect. Bobby Schwartz deserves that. He's, he's a legend. Bobby Schwartz is one of the true and living legends in modern day Speedway. Started out in the 70s and he's still racing in 2022. That's incredible. Mike Faria, Danny Becker, Dub Farrell, and Bobby Schwartz are on the countdown of some of the greatest writers of the 70s. These guys are incredible talent. <laughs> However, we've run out of time. We've run out of time now. So we're gonna have to continue this countdown and we're gonna count down to number one. Three, you wanna check it out? Two, I wanna see it. One. The countdown continues to number one. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today on the beach. We counted down and we have more countdowns left. One more show. So hang with us and we appreciate you for subscribing, liking this show. We appreciate you and thank you so much. And we're gonna see you, we're gonna see you next time. <laughs>